Our family has always loved African wildlife. It is incredible. Oh, here we go. Here's some giraffe. Hey, guys. And Steve really started it all with his passion for wildlife from Africa. And they're a force to be reckoned with, no doubt about it. He visited Africa even before I did. And there was something about African wildlife that just touched his heart. You just like to cruise up there and give him a big kiss on those lips. And Africa really is on the front line of protecting important wildlife. So we want to make sure we're doing our part, going to Africa to learn new methods that are used to protect these beautiful animals. South Africa is so special because it has some of the most spectacular wildlife that definitely needs our help. Africa, here we come. Yay. I absolutely love rhinos. Good boy, DJ. At Australia Zoo, we have an amazing herd of rhinos, and they are too cute for words. They're like big puppy dogs, especially DJ the rhino. Hi, hey, big man. He's hilarious. <laughs> DJ here loves to have his horn rub. This is the life, isn't it, DJ? So the plight of rhinos in Africa at the moment is absolutely devastating. As our population increases, our cities expand, animals are having a really hard time in the wild, especially the rhinos. And here in Africa, there's a war going on and that war is poaching. When they started recording rhino populations, there was somewhere around 500,000 rhinos within Africa. Today, we're looking at rhino numbers in the thousands. But there's hope for the future. G'day, love, how are you doing? Hi, it's nice. so good. Yes. How is everything? Everything's great. Craig Spencer is the hero who started the very first female anti-poaching unit in South Africa, the Black Mambas. Rhinos started dropping in 2012. Mm -hmm. So we approached the young women in the local communities. Yeah. First we went to the chiefs. Absolutely. And we explained our story to them. And they were of course saying, no, we want our men to get jobs. Really? said, no, but we actually want your woman to get the jobs, you see. They have this nurturing attitude. That and... mother, Absolutely. that motherly attitude. Now they, they're deployed all over the landscape. They're in five different locations. Yeah. They patrol independently day and night, and it's worked tremendously well for us. So one of the activities that the mambas will do is a roadblock, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. And if, they, if the poacher vehicle is traveling along the road and he sees the roadblock, they all throw everything out the window. Because they don't want to be caught. Yeah. This is a small white rhino horn, actually. It is extraordinary because people always forget that it's keratin, so it's the same as our hair. Yeah, yeah, and you can, you can see it yeah. when you're right up with it. It's and true. the fact that we're killing the rhinos for something that really is our own hair. Mm. It has no purpose in our lives. And it's brutal. Yeah. It's inhuman, in my opinion. Absolutely. I don't want to share my planet with people like that. No. Which means they can't reproduce quick enough to keep up with the rate that poachers are taking them out. My dad came up with the phrase wildlife warrior. You know, it is true. We're standing up and speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves. You have no idea how inspirational your dad's work was to conservationists like us. You just have to stay determined and passionate and dedicated. So thank you. No, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for recognizing the work that we do down here. Ah, oh, well, it gives me great hope for the future. Yeah. Let's find him. Yeah. Get more time. When I came to Africa, I had a mission to see a rhino in the wild. It would be wonderful to experience exactly what the black mambas are working so hard to protect. Yeah. Don't worry, Bindi, I will find for you. Oh, you're amazing. <laughs> Rolani is one of the best trackers here at Balule and he has been tracking animals for over 20 years.
That's a white rhino. <gasps> no, really? Rhino. There isn't. Oh my god. The white rhino in the water. <gasps> There's drinking the water there. You found a white rhino? Yeah. This is incredible, uh, Rulani. Thank you so much. We're looking at a white rhino <laughs> right there. There's only been a handful of times that I've ever seen a rhino in the wild. And this has got to be the moment that took the cake. It was so special. You see the ox peck on it? You clean the ticks on it. Oh, we all need an ox pecker <laughs> to keep us looking gorgeous. <laughs> see, it's getting some trees, it's scratching away. Oh, in the tree. I see, it's scratching the horns. And... Wow. Looking at him, I couldn't imagine anyone coming along and taking his horn. But it's also so heartwarming to know that it's never going to be touched. He's going to be protected yeah. forever. Really? Seeing a rhino from a vehicle is extraordinary. But getting out of the truck into the middle of the African bush to walk up to that rhino, that's a whole different story. He's starting to start move. Oh, I can see him. So right he's now. coming towards us. He's so special. So special. You see that he's walking in that direction. For me, just being able to learn about the rhinos and see them in the wild, yeah. it instills that determination to protect them forever. You fall in love with them when you get yeah. to see them like this. And this has just brought the entire trip together because of the black members and all the work that they're yeah. doing. He's allowed to keep wandering just like he's doing right now. Oh. And he just disappears again right back into the bush. Yes, easy, easy. Ah, oh, I was almost in tears. I was so happy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would do a happy dance, but I'm being quiet. <laughs> this is amazing.